consider an electron with mass m and it is moving in a orbit of velocity magnitude v and it is a circular bohr orbit actually with radius r which i have shown here now since it is moving a charged particle when it moves in a particular path or in any path then it generates a current let us suppose that that current generated i it is charged per unit time q by t and here the q is e by t and this t is actually the time which it takes to complete this particular path and that is a orbital period of the electron and that is a complete uh, there is a time which it takes to complete this one full orbit to rotate about this complete orbit yes and that t can be written as it is 2 pi r divided by v this have already you have done because we know that your speed is equal to this velocity if you uh, this v is a velocity this velocity is equal to distance over time and this distance is actually equal uh -huh. to circumference that distance is equal to uh -huh. uh -huh. circumference and that circumference is 2 pi r divided by time which it takes to complete this distance that is how i got this t equal to 2 pi r by nu the v this velocity so if you put up this value here in this equation here so you can write i is equal to e into v divided by 2 pi r so this is the uh, current uh, which is generated while moving through the distance of 2 pi r with velocity v and charge e if you know that if you remember that since we have an charged particle which is moving and it forms an magnetic dipole and then it has a dipole moment it has a dipole moment let the dipole moment be mu l it is equal to it be mu l and i think it should i should zoom it more the dipole moment is mu l and i can write it as it is current into area of loop have you heard this expression anywhere this is a common expression yes sir i a i a so it is actually equal to i into a okay current where in this case the area of the loop is as area of a circle actually because the circular orbit so that area is actually where a will be equal to 2 pi pi r square not 2 pi sorry it's pi r square this pi r square and using these values i can write i we have derived above here is the i here is the a using in this equation this so i can write mu l is equal to ev divided by 2 pi r into pi r square which is evr divided by 2 this is the dipole moment from above expressions and we are doing the classical there is no nothing quantum in this so this is just a classical approach evr by 2 now i already told you that dipole moment and dipole uh, this magnetic dipole uh, this uh, orbital magnetic uh, moment and the magnetic dipole moment orbital angular momentum and the this dipole moment they are opposite the opposite is because the charge is negative actually when charge, when charge is negative this is uh, when charge is negative there is an opposite direction of dipole moment and the angular momentum that orbital the magnetic this angular and that is why we have taken the opposite there and this angular momentum l is equal to mvr 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 now using this equation mvr if you take we have <coughs> this equation let this be first sorry let this be second if we divide first by second If we divide first by second, we will get that uh, mu l over l is equal to e by 2m, e by 2m. And mm. in most of the cases, this mu l by l, it is also called as gyrometric vacuum, is constant and is independent of the tails of the orbit. It is called a gyromagnetic ratio. Yes, sir. 
So there are two features associated with it. One is that it is actually constant. One is this and it is independent of the detail is of orbit. So we don't need the details of, we just need charge. It is a constant value, mass of the electron. So if you write it in the X vector form, mu L is a vector, dipole moment is a vector. It is equal to E by 2M. You can write L is a vector, but it's minus since these two are opposite to each other. That's mu L is opposite. If you calculate the units, units is actually ampere meter square i into a from i into a equation you can calculate the units of mu l so it is ampere meter square i can write like this or you can convert it into energy units joule per tesla dipole moment magnetic dipole moment this is joule per tesla and the more appropriate expression is mu l is minus this is gl e by 2m into l actually the gl is one for electron and it is a orbital g factor which is equal to one for electron and if g is different then we used to put that value g equal to 2 gl so it is the orbital g factor and for electrons one to calculate the value of Bohr magneton uh, which we have discussed uh, which we have mentioned above you know that the angular momentum l it is from quantum mechanics so this l is Orbital quantum, quantum, number. quantum number. number. And if you take mu L, so it is EH by 4 pi m, just putting up the value of L here in this equation. And this EH by 4 pi m, it's a natural unit. It's called as a natural unit for the measurement of atomic magnetic dipole moment. And is called Bohr magneton. So E H by is mu B. That is called yeah. Bohr magneton. If you calculate its value, these all are constants: Planck's constant, pi, mass of electron, charge of electron. Four is a constant. If you calculate the value, this mu b is equal to actually putting up the value is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 for charge, 6.63 minus 10 to the power minus 34 for Planck's constant, like pi 3.14, mass of electron 9.11, 11 10 to the power minus 31. And you will end up it is 9.27 10 to the power minus 24. So this is the magnetic moment associated with the one electron, actually. So it is very small value, minus 24 ampere meter square. And we can write then mu b is equal to, sorry, mu l. Mu l is equal to under root of l into l plus one, it is mu b. Yeah. This is l into l plus one, this is mu b. So mu l. And we can write that in more appropriate form. So it is equal to minus GL. Then I can write it as two pi H into L here. 
this equation where I have used this not this sorry this this in this equation this equation so to make it mu b this e by 2m I have multiplied and divided by these factors 2 pi by h into mu b then when you put up the value of mu b equal to eh by 4 pi m this 2 pi and h will cancel out and you will re return the e by 2m term. this eh by 4 pi to make it here eh by 4 pi this equation that's why we have multiplied this factor eh by 2 pi 2 pi by h this is the expression for the orbital magnetic dipole moment of an electron in an atom and remember that this is independent of the external factor we are not applying any external magnetic field here this is intrinsic to the atom for an electron now what happens if we keep an atom in external magnetic field if we apply external magnetic field in some particular direction to the atom where an electron is moving and we are supposing that there is a single electron which is moving about a nucleus and there is no other interaction there is an interaction between the motion of orbital motion of the electron only orbital motion of the electron and the inter external magnetic field so this is just we will consider this case when we take an atom in external magnetic field and see what happens to the magnetic moment or the frequency or the angular momentum component of an atom in the presence of external magnetic field so let us see the behavior of behavior of since we see that it's a dipole magnetic dipole a revolving electron about a nucleus in an atom it creates a magnetic dipole so what happens to this dipole when we place this dipole in external magnetic field or we apply some external magnetic field to see this dipole you already know that moving electron about a nucleus is equivalent to a magnetic dipole this is an important point this is equivalent to a magnetic dipole and when an atom having this type of dipole is placed in an external magnetic field what happens actually for example I will draw a diagram here just try to understand let us suppose that this is the sorry why doesn't it come let's suppose this is a path of an electron it is moving and this is the radius r and this has angular momentum like this perpendicular to the path of the orbit so it is just i have made it tilt to make things clear actually i can draw it a plane direct in the two dimension but i tilted it to make other things clear actually i need some more space here and this has an l if we apply some magnetic field suppose i am applying a magnetic field here this is b I hope you are able to see it yeah this is some magnetic field we are applying external such that it makes an angle theta here it makes an angle theta here this B makes an angle theta with L now when we apply this external magnetic field this the orbital angular momentum vector l the orbital angular momentum vector l it will rotate or it will precess the term is precess precess 
precess means that it will move i cannot show it here because don't have a visual experience so it will move and make a cone this l will move from here and It's not a clear one. I hope you will understand it. This. So this is L. So this L will move here. It will go like this. Here, then here, then here, and it will form a circle orbit like this. Here. So it will reach different positions actually. And when it will reach different positions, it will form a circular path. I have to clear it. This is the L. And this is B. Then this L will move in this circular path. So it will precess around actually that magnetic field axis. So just see that spinning top. If you have seen that spinning top, so it moves like this, this in different direction and it forms this cone. So this is just how the L will move actually, this L. So it will move here in this orbit. And about the field axis, magnetic field, this B. So this is called as actually, precision and it is termed as Lormer precision. Lormer precision. Lormer precision is actually the precision of an orbital angular momentum L of an electron about a field axis, external field. And the frequency with which this electron will move about this Repeat, axis. Sir. Repeat. Repeat, sir. Okay, so Lormer precision is actually a process so in which an electron, um, electron's orbital angular momentum, L, this L, it precises about external magnetic field. That means if this is a B, so this L will move around this, keeping this point fixed here. Because this point will be determined by the orientation of this orbit in which the electron is. So the orbit, it will always remain perpendicular to the path of this electron in this circle. So when it moves from this point to some this point, this orbital will tilt actually at that point to maintain this 90 degree here. It will always remain constant. But in general, and when external field is applied, it will precess around the magnetic field axis. It will move actually and form a cone it will form this cone actually. So there is another, I can write it like this. So here like this. So L can have this value also when it processes around this. So it will form this cone actually here. I hope you are able to understand, see this figure. Yes. This angle theta is between B and L. Theta is between B and L. And L will process. You understand this figure, then things are easy for us. Process about B. L will process about B to form a cone. This precision is called as Lormer precision. And the frequency is called as Lormer frequency. Lormer frequency. Now we know that our mu L we have already seen it is minus E by 2m into L, where L is under root of L into L plus 1 edge cut. And negative charge of electron of mass m and negative minus sign here is because these are opposite mu l and l 
Now, you know that when we apply external field to a dipole, a dipole will experience a torque, which will yes, tend yes. to rotate the dipole actually. So it will have a torque, tau, which will equal to mu L cross B. This you have studied in your previous classes in 12th as well, 12th standard. So mu L cross B. And you see that mu L and B, these are vectors. Tau is also a vector. And it will have, since it is a cross product of the two vectors, so it will be perpendicular to both mu L and B. When we cross product two vectors, the resultant is a vector which is perpendicular to both uh, those individual vectors. So this tau will be perpendicular to mu L and B. Since B is in this direction, this is the B, your mu L is like in this direction and you have tau in this direction. The tau will be in this direction, okay? Now, so that means I can represent tau here. Let's suppose this be tau. This here, this vector. Let this is tau. So it's always perpendicular to L tau. Now, we also know that the torque tau, it causes angular momentum to change, okay? That is tau is also given by dl by dt. Oh, you may express it. Which one can push this one? I was seen somewhere. So this torque is actually the rate of change of angular momentum with respect to time. That is another yes, definition. Sir, yes, sir. That is another definition of torque. Now, since this l changes, so there is a change dl in time dt when we apply external magnetic field b. And remember that that change is in the direction which is perpendicular to L. Remember that. Now see how. I will show you here. Since this is L, this vector, this black here, and it will precess around, so it will move like this. So this is DL. And this L is perpendicular to DL here. This. Because it is a circular orbit in the plane, which is perpendicular, this orbit is perpendicular to L actually. So you are, I will show you another here. So this is the orbit. You have L this like this. So L will, DL will move, because L will change from this point to this point. So this is DL and this is L. So these two actually, it is a circle, circular, you can think of it as a circular cap, which is kept upon the vector L. So DL will change in the direction of that L, but perpendicular to L in time DT. So torque that becomes such that the torque will always remain perpendicular to L. Hence that angular momentum L, the change in the angular momentum, this will remain at, actually it's constants, but direction changes. The L remains constant in magnitude, but it is direction changes because at one time it was at this position. Now it moves and it reaches to here. So it is magnitude will remain same, but the, this direction will change. So as time goes on, with time, with time, this with time changes. This L changes. Its magnitude remains same, but its direction changes, and it traces out this cone here. It traces out this cone. So L was here. Then it reaches this point. Then reaches here. Then here. Here, but and it reaches. It can here. So it forms this cone. This. And it forms a cone about that magnetic field axis B. And remember that the angle between L and B will remain constant. It will not change. This is the precision of L and hence the electron orbit around a B. So electron orbit actually changes. This orbit. I can see, I can uh, search for an animation and I will send it to you so that you can understand it fully. Now, if omega be the angular velocity, 
precision then l precises through an angle omega dt now see here i will draw another figure because it is congested uh, is equal to distance that is a magnitude of the angle divided by time is dt so that omega into dt will give the magnitude of that angle angle we calculate as arc over radius so if this is the radius and arc is actually dl so i can write it as omega dt will be equal to dl over radius here but dl if you see that from here in this case it will be l sin theta component actually because this l will have a component one will be cos theta one will be sin theta this will be l sin theta come here now can you calculate omega what will be omega from here so i can write it as omega will be equal to dl over dt into 1 over l sin theta and dl by dt is tau and tau over l sin theta now you also know that tau is equal to mu l cross b which is mu l b sin theta so i can put up here and omega will be equal to tau is mu l b sin theta divided by l sin theta sin theta and sin theta will cancel out so it will be equal to mu l over l into b. this is the angular velocity with which this l will precess around the magnetic field so this angular velocity of normal precision actually it is called an angular velocity of normal precision and it is magnitude of mu l into b to the ratio l ratio of the magnetic moment to these two so this omega it depends upon external magnetic field as well also if you see mu l by l it is e by 2m from our first equation in the last topic therefore we can write omega will be equal to here mu l by l that is e by 2m so e by into b this is the angle this angular velocity or normal frequency now normal frequency or angular this uh, angular velocity of normal precision now what is normal frequency how can you calculate normal frequency what is that equal to f is equal to omega by 2 pi that is equal to omega is e by 2m 2 pi into b so that is equal to this is the normal frequency this is normal frequency and it is independent f is independent of theta theta is angle between l and b so it is independent of that direction and this is called a lormer theorem actually it is also called as lormer theorem where we see that free, the lormer precision or lormer frequency is independent of the angle between the uh, orbital angular momentum l and the magnetic field b so this is used actually this frequency to calculate the energy levels in the presence of external magnetic field we will use this concept in zeeman effect mostly when we move further and this is the final result for this case so we found the f that is normal frequency we also studied how the normal precision occurs 
then there's a one more concept which is called as space quantization space quantization so I given a brief idea about space quantization in the last lecture, but we will see something uh, more about it in today's lecture. So just remember that picture we, we have seen above, and this is the orbital. This is the here the B. Let us suppose it is in Z direction, and we can write it as B Z here. Sorry. B Z here, so it is in the Z direction, okay. And this is L. So the component of this L in the direction of B will be L Z, and it makes an angle theta here. This is the electron orbit, electron orbit E. Now, if you know that this L Z is equal to L cos theta okay Lz so it is L cos theta this is the base here we have 90 degree between this because it is a circular path above that B and it's L cos theta now if you find angle cos theta it is LZ by L. L is equal to this is theta here. Under root of, I will write H cut. It 